All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Radish's Movie Club. It has been, I know, a long time since we did one of these. Probably, like, over a month, I think. Maybe even two months. I can't really remember. Um, and the reason for that was because, one, I wasn't really watching a lot of movies. Two, I didn't really feel like doing this anymore. And three, I was also busy. And also, I was playing not for broad broadcast on Wednesdays instead of doing Movie Club. Um, so, this is actually going to be the last episode of Movie Club, because, as I said, I don't feel like doing this anymore. I like watching movies, but talking about them for, like, an hour is kind of, um, a lot of work, and also kind of boring sometimes. So, but I kept saying that I was going to do one more, another episode, so I figured I'd do one more episode, talk about these last six movies that I watched in 2022, and then we will be done with it. Maybe I'll bring it back someday, if people want me to bring it back, but, um, for now, this is the last episode. So, if you um, don't remember how Movie Club works, basically I just play... Oh, well, usually there's Fall Guys here. Um, <laughs> I play Fall Guys and then talk about these movies. I don't know where it is. Hello? Fall Guys? There it is. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so I play Fall Guys so you guys have something to look at, and then I also just rant about these movies. So first on the list as is probably expected because it was the one of the most anticipated movies of 2022, is Avatar 2, Avatar The Way of Water. So this movie came out, um, well, I mean, the first movie came out in 2009, which is 13 years ago. Oh, I guess it's technically 14 years ago now. Wow. It's 2023. That's crazy. <laughs> um, and it was, Avatar 1 was the highest grossing movie of all time for a while. Uh, and then Endgame beat it, and then Avatar re-beat it because they re-released Avatar for some reason. <laughs> um, so Avatar 1 is still the highest grossing movie of all time. And um, so yeah, that's why it was kind of like very in highly anticipated. But um, a lot of people on the internet say like there, it had no cultural impact, no one cares about this movie. So the se sequel is not going to do well. It's been too long since the first one came out. And I was actually one of those people. <laughs> I didn't think um, the new one would do good. do good. I didn't think people cared about Avatar anymore. I still went to watch it anyway, but I didn't want it to be good. I was like, I, I do not want to enjoy this. Unfortunately, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> um, I actually loved the movie. I even gave it a perfect score of a 10 out of 10, which some people disagree with. But I, I loved it. It was just, for one thing, the visuals were amazing. The story was engaging. Um, I mean, those are really the only the only two things that made it so good. But, you know, all you need is a good story and for it to look nice for a movie to be good. Um, that's part of why the first one did so well is because the visuals were, like, really, like, way ahead of its time in 2009. Um, in fact, people, the world of Pandora that they created was, like so beautiful that people got depressed because they couldn't live in Pandora or something I think is what I heard and like some people like killed themselves because they couldn't live in Pandora which is kind of kind of crazy um, so but um, there are so many movies nowadays that are like that have that good quality graphics and visuals that um, I didn't think uh, the visuals of this movie would be like that much that great anymore because, you know, other movies have good visuals too. But, honestly, the visuals of the sequel were still, like, they felt way ahead of their time, even though it's 2020, it was 2022, it's 2023 now. Um, like, the water, because the whole movie's, like, centers around the water tribe now, so the way the water looks is just, like, beautiful, and the creatures they make, and the setting that they live in, all of it is just really nice to look at it's just an it's just a great experience if you go see this in theaters i actually accidentally saw this in 3d <laughs> because i bought my ticket online didn't realize there was a 3d and a non-3d showing so i just picked the time that i wanted to go to and it was like yep here's your 3d glasses i was like oh but 3d is actually what made the first one so good i think like i think it was the first big 3d movie or something like that so you know seeing this one in 3d was was cool too. Um, but yeah, I guess I didn't actually. I, I, usually, I'm I'm supposed to. Oh, I just died immediately. I'm supposed to like 
talk about what these movies are about before I go into my critique of them. So, the first one is about this the world of Pandora, where these these there's these Navi, which are the blue people, indigenous to the planet, and humans come and try to destroy them and take their unobtainium, <laughs> which is like some I don't know magical rock that they want that humans want, and then um, one of the humans gets an avatar of one of the blue people. So he like lives through them and learns to love the Navi and becomes part of them. And by the end of the first movie, he actually lives inside of his avatar. So he just becomes his avatar basically. Um, and then lives with the Navi and the humans are killed or whatever. And then in the sequel, it's been 15 years. Uh, Jake Sully is the main character and his wife, Zoe Saldana, it's the actress's name. I don't remember <laughs> her character's name. It's some name I can't pronounce, probably. They're married. They have four kids now. Um, and the humans also come back. But this time, it's the same villain as the first guy, as the first movie, but he now has an avatar. Because he was killed in the first movie, but then they saved his memories to put into an avatar. So now he's back. And that brings a whole new dynamic with some, another character who is actually his son from the first movie. Um... I don't know, it's kind of a lot to explain, but <laughs> just watch the movie if you care. I saw the first one two years ago in 2020, um, and then I didn't rewatch it before the sequel, so some things I kind of had a hard time remembering, because again, the first movie's not that memorable, but um, I was able to pick up on everything. They give you enough context to understand everything that happens in the sequel. Anyway, <clears throat> but yeah, the sequel is just it's just really good. I don't know. The, in the sequel, they Jake Sully and his family, they run to the Water Tribe to escape the humans that are trying to kill Jake Sully for some reason. I don't even know why they really want to kill him, but... Um, yeah, so they go to this Water Tribe, and honestly, that part of the movie is my favorite part. Just, like, learning about the Water Tribe and how they live their life. Um, and seeing all the new creatures and stuff, like the, the whale things, the Tolkien, I think is what they're called, um, that have, like, personalities and, like, actually talk to the tribe. I thought that was a really cool, um, really cool addition to the movie. And seeing Jake Sully's kids, you know, like, learning to live with the Water Tribe, I thought that part of the movie was my favorite. Um... Which is interesting because it's more of an action, well it's not more of an action movie, but it has action in it. Which is usually my favorite part, I usually really like action. But, I don't know, I prefer the setting, like the, you know, just them learning about the Water Tribe over the action parts. Because, I don't know, it was just really interesting to me. Um, and there's also, since there's, you know, Jake Sully and his kids in this movie, there's a whole family plot subplot and like, um, character development throughout the family and you guys know how much I love my movies about family so I really got emotional over you know the family ties in this movie <sighs> man it's been so long since I've done movie club I'm already exhausted <laughs> talking about that avatar for 11 minutes but um, yeah so I really didn't want this movie to, do, to be good or do good but it is both of those things it was good it's doing good. It's already the highest grossing movie of 2022, even though it's only been out for like a month. Um, which is kind of disappointing because I think Top Gun Maverick deserved to be the highest grossing movie. But but I really like Avatar as well. So, you know, I think they deserve it. Um, but yeah, it's already like the seventh highest grossing film of all time or something like that. And it's only been out for a month. I guess part of that probably has to do with inflation because, you know, Everything costs more these days, but wouldn't be surprised if it becomes gets into the top five, probably. I'm hoping it doesn't beat Infinity War and Endgame. I think those movies deserve to be in the top, and it probably won't beat the first one, which is at, like, what, three billion now or something? Or maybe they're still in two billion. I don't, I don't remember. No, I don't think any movie has hit three billion yet. It's probably still a two-something billion, but the new one is at, like, one point... 7 billion or something like that something crazy and it still doesn't have any competition really at theaters until ant-man 3 comes out in february like the only other movies this month 
is Megan, which already is out, but it didn't. I mean, it did well, but it didn't beat Avatar. Um, a man called Otto, which no one cares about. Plane, which also no one no one cares about. Really stupid title for a movie, by the way. Plane, like they couldn't come up with anything better. Um, Puss in Boots, which came out at the same time as Avatar, I think. Um, Puss in Boots is still doing well, but like still not beating Avatar. I don't know why I just jumped off that cliff. <laughs> I lost anyway. Anyway, so yeah, Avatar 2 is doing really well. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet and you like the first one, or you think what I'm saying sounds interesting, honestly go see it in theaters before it leaves theaters. It's it's just that good. I really liked it. Uh, although it is 3 hours and 12 minutes or something like that, so if you don't like long movies then I guess don't watch it. The first one was also 3 hours. But honestly it didn't feel like it dragged at all. I thought it used the runtime very well. Like every part of the movie was important. Um, my roommate actually says that he didn't think it was that good because it was too similar to the first movie. Because Jake Sully is, you know, learning to adapt to a new environment, basically, and there's humans trying to kill him. Which, I get that that those are, those are similarities to the first movie. But, in this movie he has a family, and honestly, the movie's more about his kids than it is about him. Uh, it, like, it focuses on them more, I think. Um... So I don't think it was that similar, but I do get that it has some similarities. <sighs> Alright, I'm, I'm already exhausted. The stream's over. Just kidding. <laughs> but, alright, I got five more movies to talk about today, and then I'm done with this, okay? I can get through it. I think I'm done with Avatar 2, but yeah, I gave it a 10 out of 10. I really think you should watch it if you like movies like this. It's a great fantasy slash sci-fi movie, and there's going to be like three more of these movies now. Which, uh, they're not going to take as long as this sequel did. I think the next one is supposed to come out in two years. Or no, probably next year, I think. 2024. December 2024. So, that one's going to be called The Seed Bearer, which is not a really good name, in my opinion. I think that's kind of stupid. But The Way of Water is a nice name, I think. So, that's all for Avatar 2. I think you should go watch it. Um, let's move on. I'm tired of talking about Avatar. Um, also, it's been a long time since I played Fall Guys. I haven't played it since the last Movie Club episode, so I don't even remember. Like, I don't even know what any of these minigames are. <laughs> but, but that doesn't matter. Let's go back to movies. So, next movie we're going to talk about is called The Menu. Oh, what? Yeah, so The Menu, this came out in November, which means it really has been a long time since I've seen this, or since I've done Movie Club, because that's two months ago. Bro, how do you play this game? Sorry. <laughs> I'm getting distracted. What am I supposed to do? Okay, there we go. Um, we well, have to, like, follow the path. I don't have enough brain power to, to do that. I'm trying to talk about movies. Alright, whatever. I'll just run around. Um, so, the menu is a comedy... Dark, I guess black, dark comedy, whatever, slash drama, slash thriller, about this group of random people that are... Um, I'm in first place. Sorry. <laughs> that are... They go to this restaurant on an island where the chef is like... Um, a psychopath. And ends up killing them all, basically. So... Oh, I'm not in first place. I actually just... I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So the menu... Yeah, it's directed... I don't know who it's directed by. I forgot to look. But it stars Anya Taylor-Joy, Ralph Fiennes, Nicholas Holt, um, John Leguzmo, and some other people as well. This movie... Oh, you saw in theaters? I thought it was pretty good. It's not, like, a perfect movie. Well, there's not really anything wrong with it. But it's also not, like, a must-see. And you definitely don't need to see it in theaters. It could... It definitely could have been a streaming movie. I don't know why, why we saw it in theaters. But, um, it was pretty good. It's got an engaging plot, you know, because the chef is, like, serving them different courses. Because it's like a nine-course meal or whatever, and each course gets progressively more sadistic and scary. So, that's interesting. And the acting is really good. Uh, Ralph Fiennes does an amazing job in this. I think he deserves an Oscar nomination for it, probably. Don't know if he will get one or not, but 
he did a really good job at being a psychopath, basically. Anya Taylor-Joy is pretty good, too. Um, so is all the other actors, really. Um, the writing is really good, because it keeps you on the edge of your seat the whole time. As I said, it's it has this nine-course meal, or seven-course, I don't know how many courses it is, but it's like a set plot that you, you know something is going to happen next, you know it's going to be crazy. So, it keeps you on the edge of your seat, and um, in anticipation of what's going to happen next. <sighs> um, it's got, honestly, it's like pretty funny, which I was not expecting it to be. Um, because the things that the chef does are funny in a really sadistic way. Again, it's like dark humor. Um, so you wouldn't expect to be laughing at this movie, but it really leans into humor. Like, it's definitely intended, intends for you to laugh at it, even though it is, like, sadistic. S sadis sadistic? That's the word, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's funny. We laughed a lot when we saw it. Uh, it's got a really good ending as well, I think. The way Anya Taylor-Joy outsmarts the chef in the end by making him cook a regular burger. Um, I thought that was a very interesting ending. Um, I just spoiled it, I know, but I usually spoil movies in Movie Club. Oops, my bad. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's good. Don't, well, it's, I guess it's probably not even in theaters anymore, but I was going to say don't see it in theaters because it's not worth it. But it is, you know, if you're bored one day and you see it streaming somewhere, I don't know where it would be streaming. Maybe maybe HBO Max? I'm not really sure. Um, then, yeah, you should watch it if you're bored. It's it's funny. Got good acting. Um, I don't really have anything else to say about it, which is funny because I just talked about Avatar for like 15 minutes. And now I just talked about the menu for like five. But um, it's just one of those movies that it's good, but it's not perfect. Uh, nothing really wrong with it, but not uh, something that everyone should see sometime in their life. Um, and I also saw this back in November, so um, that's partly why I haven't talked about it very long, because I don't remember a lot about it. Because <laughs> I wouldn't see it again, honestly. I don't usually see movies multiple times anymore. I used to, but not really anymore. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> that's all I got to say about the menu, I think. So let's just move on to the next movie, which is a movie I saw twice, actually, because it's that good. And also stars John Leguizmo. He's in both of these movies. It's called Violent Night. This is a movie about uh, Santa Claus killing bad guys. <laughs> Amy, yeah. Amy and I saw this movie together. It is very good. Um, I almost wanted to give it a 10 out of 10. Oh, that reminds me. I forgot to talk about my score for the menu. Menu got an 8 out of 10, by the way. But yeah, Violent Night. I really wanted to give it a 10 out of 10 because it's so good. It's just, it's an awesome movie. But it's not, it doesn't really deserve a 10 out of 10 because it's not like something that is really you know, profound or something to think about that much. But it's a really fun experience if you go see it. Um, I know it's a Christmas movie. Christmas is over, so... You might not want to see it, but um, honestly, it's worth it. Uh, so it stars David Harbour as Santa Claus, who David Harbour is the dude from Stranger Things. I think he's the dad or something. I don't really know. I haven't seen Stranger Things, but he's in Stranger Things. Also in Black Widow. He's the dad in Black Widow. Um, stars him and uh, John Leguizamo, Leguzmo, however you pronounce his name, as the villain. Um... And yeah, it's basically, there's a family in a mansion, and the family's full of, like, rich um, douchebags, basically. <laughs> um, and John Leguzmo and his crew of bad guys come and try to steal their fortune, while Santa Claus happens to be there. And Santa Claus is also having trouble, like, wanting to be Santa Claus still, because, you know, kids are so greedy these days, and only want video games and stuff like that. Um... But he happens to be in this house when this is happening, and there's this little girl that he wants to save. That's the only reason he wants to save them. Um, so he starts just killing all the bad guys because he has a background of being a Viking, or not a Viking, but like a warrior or something. I don't really know. It's not really clear, but he's a good fighter, basically. And 
you get to see a bunch of scenes of Santa Claus just beating up bad guys using Christmas decorations and stuff, and it's just a really fun time. Uh, great action, kind of like John Wick style action, but with Santa Claus, of course. Uh, lots of funny moments um, in regards to the Christmas stuff, and just, you know, the humor in general is just really funny. I laughed both times I saw the movie, even though I already knew all the jokes the second time. <laughs> um, and it's also just a good Christmas movie because Santa Claus is like learning to love Christmas again because of this little girl that really loves Christmas. Um, yeah, it's just so it's a good Christmas movie, a good action movie and a good funny movie all in one. It's really funny, really good movie. Um, uh, it's basically the way they've been marketing it is a mix between Die Hard and Home Alone, which I think is funny. Um, cause it is exactly that die hard because, you know, he's stuck in a place and killing bad guys and home alone because it's a Christmas movie. And this little girl sets up some home alone style traps in the movie. And that part's really funny because it kills them instead of just like annoying them like it does in home alone. Um, let's see. So yeah, I really liked it. Has some really good acting too, I think. I mean, I wouldn't say bad acting. A little girl maybe could have been better, but she's also a little girl, so it's understandable that she's not that great at acting. But yeah, everyone else I thought was a great actor. Uh, John Leguizamo, I thought he was a great villain because uh, you learn that he hates Christmas, and then when he learns that the guy he's fighting is actually the real Santa Claus, he wants to kill Santa and ruin Christmas. Um... So yeah, I don't know. It's just really good. <laughs> and I feel like I'm saying... I just keep repeating myself over and over that it's really good. And you'd think I gave it a 10 out of 10 because of that. But no, because there's not really any themes or like deep meanings or anything in it. Besides maybe, you know, learning the meaning of Christmas. Um, but it's still a really fun experience if you go watch it. Um... Even though Christmas is over, so maybe wait till next Christmas to watch it. It'll probably be streaming. I don't know where it'll be streaming, actually. Because I don't know. I don't remember which company made it. But it's good. Uh, I heard that David Harbour wants to make a cinematic universe with, like, the Easter Bunny and, um, like, other, you know, holiday people. I can't even think of any others. I guess the Tooth Fairy, maybe. Um... Which I think would be really funny, like, in the same universe, have those guys in the same style, too, with this gritty action and stuff like that. I think that would be funny. My roommate also thinks that they should make a movie, explore another, like, a sequel or a prequel exploring how he became Santa Claus. Because, again, he kind of hints to the fact that he was, like, a warrior and... Rome or, or I don't know I get, I don't know exactly where it was I'm not good at geographical locations but he had a hammer called Skull Crusher and then became Santa Claus but he doesn't really say how he became Santa Claus so I think that would be interesting if maybe they made a cinematic universe and Santa explored his past and how he became Santa that could be interesting I would be down to watch something like that because, you know, it's just that good. I saw it twice. I haven't seen a movie twice in theaters since... Um, oh, I lost. I don't know when the last time I saw a movie twice in theaters was. I guess it was probably some Marvel movie. Because I used to watch Marvel movies multiple times in theaters. Um, let me think. It must have been Endgame, right? Or what? Did any movies come out after Endgame? Oh, Far From Home. It was probably Far From Home that I saw twice. That's probably the last movie I saw twice in theaters. So, you know, it's saying something if I saw Violent Night twice in theaters. Um, but yeah, 8 out of 10. Because, I, I don't know. I feel like I should have given it a 10 out of 10. But, you know, it's not quite there, unfortunately. But still great. I would recommend it. Anyway, um... Yeah, all right, let's move on to the next movie. I'm tired. <laughs> this is actually another Christmas movie that came out last year. All these movies I'm talking about today, by the way, came out in 2022. Um, 
I say last year, but, you know, last month or two is really what it is. So this next movie is A Christmas Story Christmas, which is actually the sequel to A Christmas Story, which is like that classic Christmas movie from 1983 or something like that. I don't really remember. And this movie is the sequel. It's the first sequel with like the same characters i think i think there was a christmas story 2 at some point but i don't think they actually had the same characters or something so this is like you know one of those legacy sequels that they do is this the exact same minigame hmm. um they've been doing this a lot lately you know like top gun maverick was a sequel after many years um blade runner 2049 was a sequel after many years um those are both you know really good legacy sequels right and then they also have legacy sequels that are not good like um uh let's see i just had it in my head um god i can't remember hold on i know i have it written down let me look it up oh matrix matrix 4 was a sequel after many years that one wasn't that good i don't think ghostbusters afterlife was also a sequel after many years didn't really like that one that much either um Let's see, Independence Day Resurgence was a really bad one. That was a sequel after many years. So, you know, these legacy sequels are hit or, hit or miss. Sometimes they're really good. Top Gun Maverick, I think, is the best example of that. Blade Runner 2049, also pretty good. And sometimes they're really bad. And I think A Christmas Story Christmas was one of the bad ones. I wouldn't say it was, like, terrible, but I didn't like it. Although, I may be biased because I... You may hate me for saying this, but I actually did not really like the first one, the original, from 1983. My roommate hates me for saying that, because it's his favorite Christmas movie of all time. But I don't think it's that good. Like, the first one, it's not even really about Christmas. It's just like Ralphie, the little kid, um, just really wants this BB gun for Christmas. And um, it's just, you know, things happen to him in the movie, but nothing related to, like, there's no cohesive plot, it's just, you know, scenes happen to him. And there's not even any, like, Christmas themes in it. Like, Santa Claus, he doesn't exist in this movie, uh, as far as I can tell. Um, there's no, like, magic of Christmas. The only thing that's, like, a, maybe a good theme is the fact that um, Ralphie and his dad, like, at the end of the movie, his dad gets him the gun, the BB gun. And that's, like, kind of a nice moment. But besides that, I didn't really like A Christmas Story. I don't know. It's I gave it a 7 out of 10, the original. It's just not... I don't know. It's not very Christmassy. I think there's many better Christmas movies. If you want to watch a Christmas movie with a little boy as a protagonist, and it's not really about Santa Claus, then Home Alone is the way to go. I don't think A Christmas Story is that great. And since I didn't like the first one that much, that's probably why I didn't like this sequel that much either. I was expecting it to be good because, first of all, it got pretty good reviews, and also my roommate said he loved it. And I know he, he loves the first one, so I was like, maybe he's biased, but he was like, it's not even like I love it because it's a sequel to my favorite Christmas movie. I just think it's just a really good movie. He said that like multiple times to me. And I was like, alright, I'll watch it sometime. And I watched it, and it was not a really good movie. It's <laughs> like It's not good at all, I don't think. It has some nice moments, based on nostalgia, but I didn't think it was good. Um, I guess I should talk about what it's about. Um, Ralphie is grown up now. It's been 29 years since the first one, or something like that. He has a wife, he has kids, and he learns that his dad from the first movie passed away. Who The actor actually passed away many years ago, but this is the first time where he learns his character. the character passed away. So now he has to make Christmas the best Christmas ever because his dad used to do that for him. Even though he didn't really do it in the first movie besides the fact that he got him the BB gun. So, yeah, he takes his kids back to his hometown and with his mom, who is not the same actress as the first one. All the other s actors from the first movie returned, but not the mom for some reason. Don't know why. I think it's just because she retired. Didn't want to do it. But, um... So he lives, he's back at the house, and he has to make Christmas the best. Um, and this movie kind of suffers from the same fate as the first one, in that it doesn't really follow a cohesive plot. It's just, like, things that happen. I guess the plot is that he's trying to make Christmas the best, but there's nothing, like, 
I don't know. Like I said, cohesive. I can't think of another word for it, but yeah. So, just things happen to them. And I know some movies where it's like there's no plot are good. But this one, I don't think was good. Um, let's see. The plot is just kind of boring of him, like, you know, trying to make Christmas the best. Like, nothing too interesting happens. Um, I do like that they repeated some of the gags of the first movie. In the first movie, Ralphie does a lot of, like, looking out into the distance and then, like, imagining a really over-the-top scenario where he's the hero. So they do that a few times in this movie, which is kind of nice, but it's also, they're just, they just kind of feel like they're there because it's a Christmas Story sequel, you know? Um, and then the narration is another thing that they bring back in the first movie. First movie is narrated by a different guy, but it's like Ralphie grown up. Um, and as like, yeah, like the whole thing is narrated. So they bring that back, but this time it's actually Ralphie narrating himself in the present, I guess. And it's the same actor because I think the narrator actor from the first movie passed away a while ago. So they couldn't bring him back, obviously. So they just had Ralphie narrate it, and they he does a good job at like keeping the same voice and like tone of voice. But, again, it just feels like it's just tacked on there cause, because of the sequel. Because it's a sequel, which I guess, you know, it had to be, but I don't know. I didn't like it. There are some good gags. I mean, wait, that's those are the gags I was talking about. There's some good jokes, I guess, is what I mean. But... They feel like skits more than like scenes that'll happen in a movie. Like there's this scene where Christmas carolers are coming to their house and the mom and Ralphie are like hiding from them and like like they're going like they're like really serious about hiding from them. They're like, Don't let them see you to the wife and like hiding behind couches and trying to escape and all that and they make a really big deal out of it. And it was funny, you know, it's funny like a throwaway joke, but they do a whole like five minute scene on it and it's it's not that funny i don't know and there's other skits in there like scenes that seem like skits in there too uh, i can't really remember them because i kind of i don't know wasn't paying that much attention because the movie's not that good but uh oh hey thanks for the follow oh that's over there i can't read that ladia blita thanks for the follow uh welcome to movie club we are discussing Movies I watched last year, last month. Um, talking about Christmas Story Christmas right now, which I did not very, like very much. Um, the writing just seems really corny. Kind of reminds me of a Disney Channel movie, which I know I say a lot about some of these movies. But, uh, hey, hope you're having a good day, too. Thanks for thanks for checking in. Um, yeah, Christmas Story Christmas just feels like Disney Channel writing in that it's like really cheesy and corny. And... Um, yeah, I just... I didn't like it. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I did like that all the actors came back, though. Ralphie and his um, friends, F uh, Scut and Flit, or whatever their names are. Or Flick, I think. Or Scut's not his friend. Scut is the bully from the movie, which I thought his scene when he comes back is actually probably the best scene in the movie. Because you think he's still like evil. Because Ralphie beat him up in the first movie and uh, you think he's gonna like try to kill him in this movie but he doesn't he takes him home and he's all nice and stuff so that was a nice moment I think and seeing S Flick and whatever the other uh, shorts I think were their names seeing them again was cool I guess um, but yeah I think the people that like this movie are just blinded by nostalgia I told my roommate that <laughs> like you think it's good because you like the first movie but it, if you if you don't like me if you don't really like the first movie that much then you can watch this movie without the rose tinted glasses and see that it's not a good movie it's just not unfortunately um i think that's all i have to say about a christmas story christmas also not really a good name i don't like it like <laughs> Why would you call the first one a Christmas story and then the second one a Christmas story Christmas? I guess they couldn't go with a Christmas story too because that was already taken. But they could have come up with something. I don't know. Something better. <sighs> Alright. Almost done. Oh, so yeah, I gave this movie a 5 out of 10 overall.
that's I just didn't like it. It was near the bottom of my list. I ranked all the 2022 movies on my Instagram, Todd's Movie Reviews, and this was near the bottom. Out of the 30-something movies I watched, 30, 39 or something, 38. So it's really saying something if I didn't like this movie that much. Don't worry, it was not below Morbius. Morbius was at the bottom of the list. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, let's move on. Let's talk about what's next on my list. Is it... Banshees of Inishirin? It is. Okay. So actually, I didn't watch this movie last year. I watched this movie this year, like a few days ago. Um, it came out last year, though. It came out in October-ish, I think. Um, this movie stars um, Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson, who are two good friends in real life, um, who have started movies together before. They, in this movie, they are they both live on a fictional island off the coast of Ireland called Inishirin. And they are best friends in this movie, but Brendan Gleeson's character, whose name is Colm, just randomly decides to stop being friends with Colin Farrell's character, which his name is... Um, wait, what are we supposed to do? Oh, sorry. His name is... Uh, I don't remember his name. I'll just call him Colin Farrell. <laughs> It's a slow burn movie. Not a lot in appreciate that movie. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say I didn't really like the movie that much, but it got really good reviews, so I was I thought I would like it, but I was not really a big fan of it, unfortunately, because I wanted to like the movie, but I thought it was not. Yeah, it was it was pretty boring. It wasn't as funny as I thought it would be because it was it's marketed as a black comedy. Um, it had some funny moments, but it wasn't that great. Not that funny. And the, also the drama part of it wasn't that good either. I thought the premise actually is just kind of dumb. It's like Colm, Brennan Gleeson's character is just like, I just don't like you anymore. We're just not friends anymore. So the movie's about, you know, Colin Farrell trying to figure out why and try to get his friend back. And that premise is just stupid. Like, I know people, I guess, do that in real life. They're just like, yeah, I don't want to be friends anymore. Maybe. I mean, I've never done that. <laughs> but, um... I don't know. I thought it was dumb and didn't really like it. And I, someone told me that it's supposed to be a movie about like the nature of a human human being, human nature or whatever. But uh, I don't know. I didn't really see very many human traits in this movie. I thought it was dumb, <laughs> to be honest. Um, we think I had. Oh yeah, it's also kind of just depressing, like, cause the his sister moves away in the end. Um, his pony die or his donkey dies, um, and it's all just really sad. And like, they don't even make up at the end. They're just like kind of. I mean, I guess they make up. I don't know. It's. It's it's it just doesn't it didn't make sense to me and maybe I think it's just maybe I'm not understanding it properly or maybe maybe it's just one of those artsy movies that you know critics and film buffs love that I just don't understand because there have been a few of those like Nomadland didn't like Nomadland but everyone else loves it um, the power of the dog didn't like that movie everyone else loves that as well um, so yeah maybe I just didn't understand it very well maybe it's a metaphor for something i figured maybe it's a metaphor for the irish civil war because it's happening in the background and i don't know anything about the irish civil war but maybe like one side just randomly decided to stop being friends with the other side and that's what it's a metaphor for but again i didn't do any research on that so i could be completely wrong probably am completely wrong i told my roommate that he was like maybe it's maybe the irish civil war is a metaphor for the two friends instead because they're having a civil war between them i i don't really know i um i just think i didn't understand it. i did kind of like the motifs slash themes that they kind of have throughout this movie where it's like um either being remembered for what you did which is what brendan gleason's character wants to do he wants to like write music so people remember him or Colin Farrell's character, who wants to just be remembered for being a nice person. Um, so the, like, clash between those two, um, you know, thoughts, schools of thought, I guess, 
was kind of interesting. But they didn't really go anywhere with that either. Like, the themes aren't really explored deep enough, I don't think. Or maybe they are and I just didn't understand it. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I thought the movie would be, like, really profound or, or really funny. But it wasn't either of those things, I don't think. Um, it does have some good, some funny scenes. Like, there's a scene where... Um, Brendan Gleeson's character has a new friend and Colin Farrell meets up with a new friend and is like, hey, I got a call from the mainland. Your dad is dying. Or he says your mom is dying at first. And he's like, my mom's already dead. And he's like, oh, I meant your dad. And that whole scene's pretty funny. Um, and there's also some other, you know, pretty funny scenes. But I don't think there was like, I don't think the whole movie itself was funny. I think... You're supposed to be laughing at, like, the whole premise of how he's just like, I just don't like you no more. Which I get was funny at first, but then it wasn't, I don't know, I didn't laugh at it afterwards. So, I didn't understand this movie. I gave it a 6 out of 10 overall. But a lot of people give it, like, really high scores. It actually just won a Golden Globe last night, I think, is what it is. For best comedy? Or, wait, I could be wrong about that. Um, I thought it won something, though. And I was like, really? It's not... It's not good. <laughs> but everyone else likes it. I wouldn't be surprised if it wins a lot of Oscars. Because movies like this always win Oscars. And I'd never understand why. I will admit, the acting is really good. I thought Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell always put on really good performances. Um, in fact, they did a movie together called In Bruges. Like, over a decade ago at this point. Um, which is kind of the same style, like, I wonder if it's the same director, I don't know, I could be wrong. Same actors, though. Um, another black comedy, too. I really liked In Bruges. I thought it was hilarious and um, had a nice message as well. This movie, I didn't think was funny or had a good message. So, you know, I don't know. Um... I had one other thing about this movie that I was going to talk about. Oh, there's also some other good acting. Barry Keoghan, who um, is, he plays Druig in Eternals and is going to be the new Joker in the new Batman universe. And he's also in other things. He's in this movie, too. I thought he did a pretty good job as well. Uh, his character is kind of annoying, but like that's the point of his character. And his performance you know, really brings that home. But his character also just felt useless, like, he was just there to be, like, annoying, and then he kills himself at the end because the um, main character's sister rejected him, I guess, is why he killed himself. But, like, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe it's because his dad beats him. No idea. It's, it's a weird movie, and you may like it if you're a, if you're a film buff. Um, but I was not a fan, unfortunately. Anyway, um, let's see. I only have one other movie to talk about today. It's been 45 minutes. Can I talk about this next movie for 15 minutes? Because I try to make it to an hour on all these streams. Um, don't know if I will. <laughs> let's find out. Because, I don't know, I don't think I have much... Oh, shoot. Oh, actually, you know what else I can say? about this movie is the scenery was really nice and it had some good cinematography as well. I mean, I guess I can't really say the scenery was nice because it was kind of like bland, but it looked interesting, I guess is what I should say. It's a fictional island in Ireland, or off the coast of Ireland, called Inishirin, which is what the movie's called, Banshees of Inishirin. Um, so I don't know where they filmed it, but it looks nice and they did a good job with the cinematography as well. Movies like this, you know, usually do a pretty good job at that. Um, but again, I think there's movies that have better cinematography. So hopefully it doesn't win Oscars for that. I hope it doesn't win any Oscars. But my guess is it's going to win Best Actor. Or best Actor. Um, probably Best... Maybe even Best Picture, I don't know. Which I shouldn't. Because it's not that good. Alright. Let's move on to the last movie of this Movie Club episode. Which is... Glass Onion, which is the sequel to Knives Out. Um, so, bit of backstory. 
to this. Um, yeah, here, this will this will take up a, a good amount of time. So, before the pandemic hit, right, I had never seen so many movies. There were a ton of movies that I had just never watched that, like, everyone has seen. Jaws, I had never seen it. Jurassic Park, never seen it. Um, Matrix, never seen it. Um, a lot of other movies, never seen them. And, like... Any movie that you can think of that you're like, everyone has seen this movie. I had never seen it. Terminator, never seen it. Alien, never seen it. Um, and then the pandemic hit, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to start watching all these movies that I've never seen, especially because I was going to a film school for college. So I, I kind of needed to have seen these movies. I had never seen the Tarantino movies, never seen Nolan movies. So when the pandemic hit, I was like, you know what? I got a lot of time. I'm going to start watching all these movies. So now I have seen all these those movies that I just mentioned. There's still some that like everyone has seen that I haven't seen, that I just haven't gotten around to. Fast and Furious is one. Transformers is another franchise that I haven't seen. Um, Lord of the Rings is probably the biggest one that I have not seen. I just, I just don't want to watch it. They're so long. Even though I watched Avatar and other long movies, but Lord of the Rings just doesn't seem like my thing. But anyway, so I've seen most movies now that everyone has seen. Um, but. The reason I'm talking about this is because the first movie that my family and I decided to watch, because we decided to do this together, um, the first movie we, we watched during this marathon, during the pandemic, was Knives Out, the first one, which had came out like a few months before. And we heard it was good, so we watched it, and we loved it, honestly. Um, I thought it was really good. It's a mystery movie, um, you know, about this mansion where... This, it's a whodunit, I mean, I guess is what it is. The grandpa died or something, so they hire this detective to figure out who killed them because they know it was someone in the family. And it's got this really witty humor and writing, and it's also funny. So Knives Out was a really good movie. I gave it a 9 out of 10. And that came out in 2019. Glass Onion is the sequel to Knives Out. came out 2022, uh, like around Christmas time. Uh, also, you may be wondering why they're called these. I think they're like Beatles lyrics, is what I heard. Knives Out and Glass Onion, or something like that. Don't know why, but yeah. This movie, Glass Onion, it's a sequel, but the only recurring character is the main character, Daniel Craig, whose name is Benoit Blanc, or something like that. He's the detective. Um, none of the other characters from the first movie are in it, so you don't even have to see the first movie to understand it. In fact, we watched this on Christmas with my older brother, who had never seen the first one. But he was able to understand this one because you don't need to watch the first one to understand the second one. Which is a good thing. So they're not it's not really a sequel, but it's like... Um, you know, it's, uh, it's the same style. It's another whodunit. Someone dies, and they're trying to figure out who did it. And the detective is there. This time... Um, he wasn't invited, though, by the killer, at least. Well, I guess he wasn't invited by the killer in the first one, either. But anyway, yeah, so they go to an island this time where of uh, this tech billionaire. It's a group of friends who are all douchebags, again. Um, and one of them is dead, so they're trying to figure out who. And yeah, so... Um, Uh, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. I had, I had it in my head. It's on Netflix. It's a good movie, the sequel. I really liked it. I think the first one is a little bit better. I give them both the same score, though. But the sequel is also really good, I thought. Uh, the, um, what's it called? The, the, the main factor of the Knives Out movies? Not main factor. I don't know. I can't think of the word, but. The thing that these Knives Out movies do is, like, they go back and retell scenes from the movie um, from a different perspective. Oh, did I lose? I guess I lost. <laughs> um, which I, is my favorite part of these movies, I think, because it, you know, like, reveals new things um, as it goes back and retells the scenes. Both movies did this, and they did a, do a really good job at it. Uh, the writing is just really witty in that sense. Um... And also, I'm pretty stupid, so I 
you know, I was learning all these things for the first time as well. <laughs> I mean, most of the audience, like, doesn't get the, these things at first, so that's why they read telethenes. But yeah. <sighs> um, let's see. So, yeah, I really liked... It's also a really funny movie. Both movies are hilarious, just in terms of, like, the writing. The characters, their acting is funny. Um, the things they say is funny. But there's also this mystery involved with the death. And... Yeah. So... Mystery is really engaging. Retelling scenes are really cool. Lots of really funny moments. Lots of satisfying satisfying payoffs. Um, like things happen that you're like, oh, um, that happened. <laughs> I don't know. I can't think of words right now. I'm I'm at the end of the movie club stream. I'm tired of, of movie clubs, so I'm losing my train of thought. But acting's really good. It's got a lot of. Oh yeah, that's another thing about these movies. It has a lot of A-list actors in it all the time. Um, Daniel Craig, of course, is the main character. In this movie, they have Edward Norton, Dave Bautista. Um, who else do they have? Kate Hudson, I think? Or I could be wrong. Um, and some other people. So, you know, they're all good actors already, so... Um, You'd expect them to be good in this movie as well, which they are. Um, let's see. What else do I have to say about this movie? Um, oh, <laughs> there's an entire scene dedicated to Among Us in this movie. <laughs> because it actually, it's, it's, it's interesting, it takes place during the pandemic. So, the, the detective at the beginning of the movie, he's playing Among Us with these other famous people that I don't really know. But they're famous. He's playing Among Us with them. And he's a world-class detective. Like, the world's best detective. But he's really bad at Among Us, which I think is hilarious. Um, so, yeah. And, yeah. So, it's just... It's surreal to me to see Among Us in a movie. Because, you know, Among Us is such a meme. But I'm glad that it is in the movie. Because it's, it's really funny. Um, and it makes sense because, you know... Among Us is a whodunit game, and the Knives Out movies are whodunit movies. So, yeah, it's... <laughs> so if you haven't seen this movie, I think you should watch it just for the Among Us scene alone. But also, it's got some good... It's a good mystery, good humor, it's really funny. Just a good movie overall. I gave it a 9 out of 10. The first one also got a 9 out of 10. You don't have to see the first one to watch the second one, but they're both on Netflix, so you might as well watch them both. Um, they're definitely worth it. And, uh... Yeah, and he's making a sequel, a threequel as well, which will be with another new cast, probably. I saw a tweet that said that they should definitely make one where he's the detective is with the Muppets. It's like a Muppets murder mystery. I think that would be hilarious. Um, I don't think they're going to, but the director, Ryan Johnson, writer slash director, he did respond to that tweet and was like, that's a great idea, but I think he was joking. But wouldn't it be hilarious if Daniel Craig was in a murder mystery movie with the Muppets? I think that would be amazing. So, hope they do that for the third one. They probably won't, but it would be hilarious. Also, Ryan Johnson was the director and writer of The Last Jedi, which is my favorite of the Star Wars sequels. Most people hate it, but I really like that movie. So, I um, am a fan of his writing already. So that's why I like these movies. But, you know, most people like these movies. I haven't really seen anyone who dislikes them, if I'm being honest. Um, so yeah, it's a good good movie to watch with your family, too. My whole family watched it together. We were trying to figure out the mystery ourselves as it was happening. We didn't do a good job at it, but, you know, we tried. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely watch Glives Out... Or, Glives Out. Pff, Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. Um... And Knives Out as well, if you haven't seen it. They're both 9 out of 10. Both great watches. And yeah. So that's all the movies I had to talk about today. We talked about Avatar 2. Avatar The Way of Water, which got a 10 out of 10. Then we talked about The Menu, which got an 8 out of 10. We talked about Violent Night, which also got an 8 out of 10. We talked about A Christmas Story Christmas, which got a 5 out of 10. We talked about The Banshees of In Inishirin, which got a 6 out of 10. And we talked about Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, which got a 9 out of 10. So lots of, lots of good movies today some bad ones but you know mostly good movies all these movies came out in 2022 i would recommend most of them to you 
Um, not Banshees, not Christmas Story, but the other four are good movies. So I am actually going to end the stream now because I, am, I mean, I don't have any more movies to talk about. And also I am tired of movie clubs. So um, yeah, this is actually going to be the last episode of movie club. Sorry if you guys enjoyed this, but I do not enjoy it anymore, honestly. I mean, I like talking about movies, but talking about all these movies for like an hour, it just starts to become a chore at eventually. So not going to do it anymore, unless maybe one day if I if people really want me to bring it back, maybe I will. But for now, I'm not going to. Uh, this is the last episode for a while. But uh, this full episode will be up on YouTube at Radishologist, as w as are all the, other, all the other Movie Club episodes. Um, and my next stream will be this Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I will be doing more Radish SMP, which is Minecraft. Um, looking forward to that. Only two more episodes of Radish SMP are coming. Um, because I have some big, big plans in the works for streams, which I'm not going to talk about yet. Although I probably should talk about it soon, because I don't really want it to be a surprise, because I want you guys to know about it ahead of time. I don't know. I'll talk about it in another stream, not this stream. So this is probably my last stream on a Wednesday for a while. Next week will be Sunday, or it'll be this Sunday, and then next Sunday, um, Radish SMP, of course. And we'll see what comes after that. So, uh, if you enjoyed, make sure to follow, subscribe, like. Uh, follow me on social media everywhere, Radishologist, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, uh, probably some other places, YouTube. I'm everywhere, so follow me there. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of Movie Club. I hope you enjoy Movie Club as a whole, that is. And I will see you guys next time.